I have just uh, I have just said, which is development of the required infrastructure facilities for learning at 20 now, uh, develop public-private public partnership to improve education, and then there's a bursary now which the government introduced, where students, indigenous students will have access to some resources to be able to finance their, their education. It is the policy of the president and this government that no child should fail to go to school because of poverty. So there's a provision in the budget for students' law to augment, actually it's, a, it's an additional to uh, already some of the scholarship schemes which exist already in the Ministry of uh, Education, which have been accessible to students. So at page 21, we have the simplified breakdown of the allocations in the 2024 budget. Uh, the, the ministry and its agencies is 1.23 trillion, that's their recurrent and capital, uh, EB 251, and then transfer to TED for projects 700 million. So this is the basic uh, thrust of the budget for this year on the Ministry of Education. But we also, it's very important to mention also, Mr. Chairman, that we have a national library that has not been completed. For us, it's a shame that as a country, we don't have a national library. It's a national monument. It's a national monument. On your way from the airport in the central citizen district, you could see this major magnificent uh, facility, which has been there for the last uh, 2006. Yes, when the job was given out. And for us, the resource of our national library and other essential documents are scattered all over the country. We have resolved and we want to solicit the support of this body, please, for us to complete that library. In the next two years, let us get done with it because when you travel out, one of the things people visit is their libraries. You, I'm sure you know, you remember the Library of Congress in the U.S., Kew Garden in the U.K. You know, now know that they are very key major monuments. So it's very important for us to uh, complete it. Then um, I also want to say, Mr. Chairman, an appeal actually, that one of the things that we have been doing since we came into office is to engage our colleagues quietly in the background through the back channels for us to have a very stable academic calendar in tertiary education. It is so terribly important, not only for our students to be able to learn, have a steady learning period, but for international engagements. You cannot have collaborations with institutions abroad when there is uncertainty about calendar of your institutions. They can't send students, their, star, their scholars cannot plan to come here because they are not sure whether they will go and strike the following day or not. And one of the things that is outstanding now, they are already giving, giving their part, but there are two things which we need to do. Uh, it may not be in this budget directly, but it's something that we, so we, we, we want to appeal. You lend your weight or the weight of this uh, office too which is the payment of the four months outstanding which the president gracious approved for lecturers and then uh, the salaries 35 to 25 percent salaries uh, which was approved from the last administration which actually this administration has already adopted and issued a circular for payment this is still outstanding and they understandably, they are getting worried because they've done their part, we need to do our part. So we want to appeal that we take that as part of what we will take forward to our leadership. So Mr. Chairman, Co-Chairman, uh, members, in brief, 
these are the policy thrust and submissions for, for and on behalf of all important ministers of education uh, for this year's budget. And as I said, to conclude, if we are able to get things right in education, and I don't see any option anyway, really, if we are going to be serious as a country, there's simply no option to getting things right in education, because getting it right in education means preparing for the future of this country. This is just what it means. Because the country is not just driven by physical facilities. No, it's manpower, the quality of its manpower. That is the driving force that drives the progress and, 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 uh, and, and development of any country. They are the ones who will innovate. They are the ones who will man pro uh, provide for the roads. They are the ones who will man the hospitals. You know, all these, these are all mandates, people who emanate from the education. So it's extremely important if this committee is in charge of this key sector that we give the necessary emphasis so that we achieve our mandate. And we can assure you, Mr. Chairman and Co-Chairman, sir, this leadership, this leadership under the inspiration of our president has the determination, the commitment, the resolve, and the capability to drive this every policy here that we have stated to actualization. Because the key problem always uh, is actualizing policies, bridging that gap between policy and implementation. We have that resolve to get these policies dropped on ground and arrive where they're supposed to arrive. So once more, uh,